The second phase making LED is pretty simple. It's been three days since we took our rice um, washed water and put it in a jar and let it sit with the paper towel on top as and the LAB has inoculated the rice water. What you may notice is when you look at it closely is that there's a sediment at the bottom, a slight film at the top, and in the center is semi-cloudy liquid, but this is the LAB inoculant. Now how we know it's done is when we smell it, let me get my mixing thing out of the way here. When you smell it, it has a very slight hint of almost yeasty, bread-like, sweet, a little sweet and sour. Maybe that's it. LAB is, yeah, sweet and sour, kind of more like a cottage cheese, maybe not bread. So, but it definitely has a smell. When we first started and just separated out the, the rice water and put it in the in the jar, it had no smell at all. And what I've noticed in making LAB is in once it begins to separate and clear, the first smell I get usually is a little more sour. And if I give it another day at that point, then I get still a hint of sour, but more a hint of sweet. So it's kind of semi-balanced. So there's some activity going on that at least what I have found is the LAB is more effective in making the final um, product that we're going to be doing with the whole milk. Now you don't have to use whole milk. Any milk will do because basically LAB being lactobacillus is acting on the lactose in the sugar, which is the sugar in the milk. Okay, you can get that in skim milk, organic milk. It's not really that, you know, critical which one. You can even get it in powdered milk if you reconstitute it. You can use that too. The whole point is the lactobacillus is going to be working on the lactose and propagating itself rapidly on that. What this is going to do is once we mix this, and it's very important to mix it in a ratio of, of one part of the inoculant in the rice wash water with 10 parts of milk. So we have a half gallon, which is 64 ounces, and we're going to need six and a half ounces, roughly, of the inoculant. And we're going to mix it into a big jar. Um, and what I recommend is something that has a big enough mouth that you can reach your hand in there or actually get a good scoop in here, because what's going to happen is these guys are going to separate. And when they separate, you're going to actually end up with a cheese curd on top, some sediment on the very bottom, and the LAB serum, which is what we're going to be using in our K and F practices, is going to be in between. So the first thing we need to do is we need to use our turkey baster and gently go through the skim at the top and pull out six ounces of the LAB serum. So let's take a look and get it done. You may notice that when I stand up, I disappear. It's magical. Okay, you gotta be careful not to mix this up. So the, the point at which you wanna do is just gently pull the material out. And you don't wanna suck up sediment from the bottom either. So you kinda wanna be careful how it's done. And what we're gonna do is keep doing that until we get to six ounces. And sometimes too, on the turkey baster itself, the initial time you poke through that skin on the top, it may attach itself to the outside of the turkey baster. So you gotta be careful not to uh, rub it off and into your actual mix itself. We are at Approximately just a tad over six ounces, which is where we want to be. So that's perfect. So when you sniff it, definitely smell 
almost a little, it's like almost like a sweet and sour bread. Kind of strange. So the other thing we're gonna do is, I usually let my milk sit out for a bit. Um, kind of warm up a little bit. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. It's just something I do. But um, we'll put the uh, milk into our vessel. Try not to make too much of a mess. Okay, here's an important safety tip. You're going to want your vessel to have head space because this stuff can expand. So when it begins to separate and the cheese curds float to the top, they can actually begin to push upwards. So if you have a container that you, you know, after you get your entire mix, it's, you know, filled right to the top, the chances are you're going to have an overflow. So you don't want to do that. So you want to give yourself, you know, a third, that's kind of what I shoot for, something that gives me at least a third of the headspace, and then again, something wide enough at the top. top. Doesn't matter if the bottom gets narrow because that's just where the sediment's going to settle. But we want to be able to get that curd off the top once the stuff separates. So then the last step is we put our inoculant in. You can stir it if you want, but um, you know, from my perspective, I don't bother with that. And then the last thing we're going to do is let me grab a paper towel here is we are gonna put, just like we did on the rice water, we put the top on, and then we put a rubber band on. The top. And the whole idea is what we're trying to do is you still want gas exchange, and um, just keep the critters out, if anything. But normally what I do is I just put this in my pantry, which is dark most of the time. Um, I put a, I'm going to label this today's date on it and just check it on a daily basis. And then anywhere from, you know, it just depends how active things are. It could be three days, could be five days. Um, if you start going longer than six days on it and it starts to have molds build on it, or it starts to get an off smell, like it's souring, it's not going to work. So this should not smell. That's the interesting thing about this. The lactobacillus is going to quickly uh, dominate any of the uh, possibly pathogenic things in here that would give off smells, a sour smell, or, or, you know, it just, you know, bad milk smells like. This will not smell at room temperature. It'll begin to smell kind of like cheese because in essence, that's what we're doing is we're going to make a split between the fat and the proteins are going to float to the top. And what's going to be left is lactobacillus, basically in a, an, a whey serum. And that's the carrier for the lactobacillus. That's what we're going after. Um, just to know, this is how we're doing this. There are experts out there in, in Korean natural farming. Chris Trump. Drake or Eric Weinart. The Natural Farming uh, has a Facebook group, really good people in there that have done this stuff a lot. So what we're doing is just sharing with you the easiest way for us to do this. On the last step, we'll show you how we separate it out and we'll talk about what it is we do with it and why we make it. But it's one of the most simplest uh, solutions to make. So let's set it aside and see what happens in a few days.
Well, it's been five days since we put the rice water in with the milk and put our uh, paper towel top on and let it sit. And what you can see is we have really good separation. There's some film that are, is, is along the sides, but that's just basically uh, some remnants of the uh, cheese curd, which is now floating up the top. The smell on this is very faint. Smells a little bit like cheese. And what we're gonna do now though, is we're going to take uh, gently without trying to disturb this, take the cheese curd off, and then we're going to decant it into this half gallon uh, jug. And we're gonna strain it using this strainer. You can buy these at like Home Depot, they're paint strainers, but they're works really well for uh, taking out um, large size particles. And so this funnel is also purchased at Home Depot, just a, something from the auto section of it. And it's just something really easy to use. The nice thing about this strainer is it has an elastic top to it. So we can just uh, put it right over it and it folds down and then We'll put, uh, as we drain the liquid through this, it'll catch any of the cheese curds, and then what should be left will be uh, the whey. There's three layers in here that we have to be careful with. We only want the middle layer of it, which is right here. Uh, that's the whey serum. There's some sediment at the bottom and the cheese curds at the top. Now, interesting thing about the cheese curds, and I'll put a link in the show description to Chris Trump, He's actually got a video on how to take these curds and use them to make cheese that people can eat. You can eat this cheese. It's, you know, right now it's kind of in a raw state. It's kind of like cottage cheese in a sense, but um, you can use it to actually make uh, a, a really pretty good cheese. A lot of people feed it to their dogs or uh, put it into their bokashi or feed it to their chickens, but uh, it's basically protein and uh, fat from the milk. So we're going to undo it here and there is no molds or anything on the top. Okay. What we're going to do is gently scoop out kind of a hole in this curd, uh, without making too much of, uh, you know, disturbing what's below it. Try not to anyway. And so we can get access to the whey serum that's underneath. So I got a little hole there. Tastes good. And then now we're just going to pour this liquid, which is the whey serum. Got most to so just make certain that I don't drop too much of the big stuff in here. Let's see if I can do this right. We still have a little bit more left. Okay, I think we got, I'd say the vast majority of it. There's still a bit left in the cheese curd itself, but um, this is our lactobacillus serum. Now, you can store this in the fridge for probably up to almost a year, um, but mostly, you know, it's like any natural thing, it's most active when it's fresher. Um, this is what we use in our KNF solutions, our Korean natural farming solutions. It's also used as a deodorizer. Lactobacillus can actually cut down on a lot of odors related to ammonias and things like that. 
Uh, in Korea, they use it uh, extensively in spraying in chicken coops and pig pens, things of that nature. Um, it's very good at treating, um, uh, helping stimulate compost piles. Uh, used for, in k &F, we use it for helping fighting off pathogenic things. This will outcompete most um, bad anaerobes. And it will also uh, help knock down powdery mildew. So there's a broad variety of things that it's useful for. Another thing you can do if you can't put it in a fridge, you can stabilize it with sugar on basically a um, little more than a one-to-one -one ratio. And the idea behind that is the brown sugar that you would use to do that would basically put uh, the lactobacillus in kind of like suspended animation because it wouldn't have access to the water uh, in here and it would just basically go into hibernation. Then when you pull it out, it uh, mix it in solutions with other things, it becomes active again. So that would make it shelf stable and you wouldn't, you'd be able to store it for several months uh, in a cool, dark place. Uh, doesn't have to be cold like a refrigerator, but just, you know, nice room temperatures, it'll be shelf stable. The last thing that uh, you can use this for is if you're into Bokashi, and we'll do a video on that in the future, uh, which is fermenting compost step. Um, a lot of people are doing that. This is the same stuff that's in EM1. Um, EM1 also contains some yeast and some other uh, types of bacteria, but basically the dominant thing in EM1 that's used in Bokashi fermenting is lactobacillus. So if you didn't want to, you know, you couldn't find the EM1 or you can't purchase it, you can make this simply from rice water, your milk, five days, and you're good to go. You can use this directly. You don't even have to ferment grain to do it. You can use it directly in making your own Bokashi. So that's it. Not much to it. It's easy to do, and it's very useful around the farm. I want to thank you guys for watching today, and uh, be sure to check out our other videos, and we hope that you have a good day. Bye-bye.